Hey everyone, I'm about to show you why still airbox is an absolute game changer if you're a new mycologist. And trust me, you'll never go back to not using one. That is, unless you have a laminar flow hood, in which case you have no need to watch this video. So let's talk about what a still airbox is, why you need one, how it's going to help your mycology efforts, and then let me show you how to make a really simple and easy one that you can start using today. So a Stella air box, as you can see, is basically just a small contained area where we are stopping all air movement within this contained area for the purposes of doing our mycology work. So floating all around us all the time are millions of things we can't see, uh, good things, bad things, bacteria, contaminants. Things that ultimately are going to compete with our mycology or efforts, our, our mycelium, uh, and, and uh, when, when we get to right down to it, uh, the mycelium is going to be competing against these other organisms uh, to try to grow on the substrate that we put it on, and it's going to try to win. It's a big battle. And if our mycelium wins and beats out all of the contaminants that we're trying to keep out, we eventually will be rewarded with a great flush of mushroom. But we need to make sure we give our mycelium, give our spores, give our liquid culture as much of an opportunity, as big of an opportunity, as, as great of a chance as possible to succeed. And that means minimizing all risk of getting contaminated. So we can do that in a couple different ways. And there are two big ways that you'll hear mycologists use two methods, I guess, that you can use to reduce your risk of contamination during your mycology procedures. One of them is using a still air box like this. And one of them is using another device that I mentioned earlier, a laminar flow hood. Those are basically just a big air filtration system that blows clean air out at you on a work workstation, on a table, and you can do your work in front of that in completely clean air without the risk of uh, contaminants coming in into contact with your work. That is the most effective way of doing your mycology work, but it's an expensive uh, tool to have, especially if you're not going to be doing mycology in a bigger way. If you're a home mycologist, a still air box, in most cases, is going to be uh, just fine for what you need. Uh, now, that said, your contamination rates are going to be higher in a still air box than compared to uh, working in front of a laminar flow hood. I don't know the exact numbers, but just to uh, give you kind of an idea, you know, a laminar flow hood working in front of that, you might have, uh, say, a 95% chance of uh, not having contamination or a 5% chance of uh, getting contaminated. Whereas in a still air box, you can drop that uh, down to probably 75% chance of success your success rate you can say is 75 percent uh, now again those somebody can correct me in the comments and tell me i'm sure there are precise uh data points out there in regards to the uh effectiveness the success rates or contamination rates of working with still air boxes versus laminar flow hoods so please if you know that share it with us let us know um but these do greatly minimize your risk of getting contamination. I've been using this exact one for, uh, I think over two years now. This is the first one I've I ever made. And I'm excited because I have a new one that I'm gonna be sharing in another video. But uh, this is the first one I ever made. That I've shared uh, kind of what it is and why we use it. Let me share with you a couple different methods of making a still air box. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is a big uh, tote, a big plastic container. This, just to give you an idea of the size, this is a 105 quart or a 99 liter container. This is a Sterilite container, that's the brand. If you can get a, 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 a an off-brand, just fine. 
get whatever's cheapest. Uh, but Sterilite, they, they do make great containers. They're sturdy and uh, they, they work well. They will be a little more expensive though. Again, the size of this is 105 quart, uh, 99 liter. I remember looking back, I got the biggest one I could find. I wish I would have uh, been able to find one a little bit bigger, but I know a lot of people work in boxes that are even smaller than this. And I'd say I'm an average size male. I'm 5'10", uh, 165 pounds. Uh, and so I, I don't need a, a huge one or anything like that, but it's nice to have more workspace. Uh, keep in mind though, that's gonna be more area that you have to clean. So we do have to clean this very well, uh, disinfect it, uh, using 70% um, isopropyl alcohol, or some people use, I believe as a 10% bleach solution. I, I've not used bleach in the past, so somebody out there that uses bleach, please chime in and tell me what's the uh, percentage of bleach you use in a bleach solution. What's your recipe? So I just use a, a little spray bottle. These little misting bottles, these flaresol bottles are super nice. But before you get started, when, uh, you know, this is back to how you use it, you're going to douse everything before you do your work with isopropyl alcohol outside and inside, including your workstation. So if I were working on this table, I'd have it cleared off. I'd spray everything down, let it sit really until it dries if you can. Um, I go overboard, so I'd probably do several rounds. I'd wipe everything down. Um, I'd spray it. I'd let it sit. I'd wipe it, spray it let it sit until it dries probably and then do my work let me show you real quickly how to make this it's pretty easy now normally you don't see it sitting this way you're buying your totes plastic bins like this using it for moving putting your books whatever your junk in here your blankets uh you'll have to pardon these brown stains this is Another nice thing about having a big tote like this is that it can double as a fruiting chamber. So I, I used this several times to fruit my shiitake mushrooms and to fruit, uh, oh God, what did, uh, what other mushrooms did I fruit in here? But several varieties anyways. And uh, the shiitakes, if you know anything about those, they go through a browning process and, and let off uh, these dark brown metabolites and stain my plastic bin which is what those brown stains are so pardon those but nonetheless um, here is the Sterilite bin what you're gonna do is you're gonna want one with a lid this one had latches on it but the latches broke off if, if it has latches that's nice but at least one that has a good seal just so the lid's not falling off you're gonna flip this baby over and what you're gonna want to do is just cut some armholes in it simple as that right wrong it, it, it's not that simple because if you try to just go in here and cut this and sorry about the tape i had when i use this as a fruiting chamber i'll cover these holes with paper usually and i did like to put a piece of tape across there paper was off but the tape wasn't so there are a couple ways you can get your hole if you try to just drill a hole in and then cut it with knives it's gonna split like crazy and it's going to look like shit, quite frankly. Uh, so you don't want to do that. There are a few other ways you can do this and get nice clean holes like I did here. Now, um, one method is going to be um, using a hole saw. And I'm looking to see if I have one handy. I don't think I do because that's not the method I used. And if I do have one, I do. But... This is a much smaller hole than what you need, a much smaller hole saw. Um, and, and basically it's a drill bit. It's gonna go into your drill. And when it spins, it cuts out a circle, whatever size this bit is. So this one would be a quarter size hole. And uh, put it in your drill and just go real slow. And if you go too fast, it will split the plastic so i typically what i do is this one has a little hole in it but do a pilot hole do a starter hole and then use your hole saw to uh, go in at kind of a medium speed and it should come out pretty cleanly for you another method you can use is uh, the old-fashioned burning a hole method 
which is what I tried. I read about this online and I thought, God, this is gonna be the only way to get a nice clean hole. You get an old coffee can and you get it real hot, put it on the plastic, burn it through. You've got these nice, perfect holes, which is true, except you can see it kind of melted. It looks a little gross. Did get a little jagged and uh, it's not gross. It's just, you know, melted plastic there. So what I did, I did, I, I did it. I went out and I got a, a cheap coffee can the biggest I could find. And luckily it's like the perfect size for my arm. I got bigger than average forearms, not super big, but uh, bigger than most. Um, but they fit in there nice and I have enough, enough room to move around. My one piece of advice is really, really quadruple check how far apart you want these holes to be. Cause in the end, I wished, I wish mine were a little bit closer. Uh, it works just fine, but there are times where I'm, you know, hitting both arms in the middle. So think about that. Uh, if you do this method, the burning hole method, take your can, empty it out. You can put this right on the stove top, especially if you have an electric one, it works well. Don't grab this with your bare hands and be a jackass. Uh, you, you'll be uh, in the hospital getting your hands taken care of. It's gonna get hot all the way through. Use heating pad or heat pads, hot pads, some sort of gloves. Hold on to this, bring it up to where your hole is. Take a permanent marker and actually draw out the entire circle. That's gonna guide you. Get it really hot until the edges are red hot. Put it on your uh, circle and just push it through. I thought it was gonna go right through. It, it didn't. It smokes like crazy, so be prepared for that. Set off my smoke uh, alarms in my house. Um, you really have to apply some pressure. So I was holding it with both hands and it was sli it started sliding around as the plastic melts. So think about that. It doesn't always go right through. I guess maybe I didn't have it hot enough. And this is Sterilite, it's a little bit thicker. But get it burning hot and if you can hold it with one hand hold the bin with the other and really apply a lot of pressure when you're pushing. do it outdoors if you can i know that's hard because you have to heat this up indoors on the stove typically but it's going to smoke a lot uh, but i made it work uh you guys can make it work too and then uh, in terms of using this uh, i've had this baby for two years it looks like crap uh, but it's still going strong. The, the structure's in place. Uh, it's still plastic. I, I sanitize it, disinfect it, uh, and it's working for my experiments. But I'm moving on to something new. So stay tuned for my next videos, and you guys will be able to uh, see my next still airbox. And then I'll probably do a comparison video as well, just showing the differences. But this is a still airbox. It will change your life in terms of your mycology work. So I encourage you to make your own or go on Amazon and buy a cheap one today and start uh, using it in your mycology work. And you'll really see your contamination rates drop. I guarantee it. Thanks guys.